Hi, I'm Dr. Ling, consultant pediatrician at Thompson Hospital, Kota Damansara in Malaysia. Today, we are going to talk about why I believe a Pfizer revaccination or booster is so crucial for some of those who have completed the Sinovac vaccine. Okay, to come to that conclusion, we need to look at the effectiveness data of the three main vaccines used in Malaysia. On the 23rd of September 2021, Dr. Kalaya Rasu from the Institute of Clinical Research Malaysia released the data on the effectiveness of COVID vaccination in Malaysian adults. Overall, vaccines are able to reduce admission to ICU by 83% and death by 88%. Looking at individual vaccine brands, the AstraZeneca vaccine is able to reduce ICU admissions and COVID deaths by 96%, while Pfizer is effective in reducing ICU admission by 92% and COVID deaths by 93%. Lastly, the Sinovac vaccine is able to reduce ICU admissions by 77% and deaths by 84%. Okay, on the surface of things, the vaccines appear to be really effective. But I would like to point out a few key points here. The data seems to show that the AstraZeneca vaccine to be the most effective. But hold on, for those who took the AstraZeneca vaccine, before you start celebrating, listen to what I have to say first. It is not as it seems. Firstly, the AstraZeneca vaccine was an opt-in vaccine where most of the recipients were from the younger age group. At that time, there was fear of blood clot side effect and the authorities opened up the vaccine to anyone who would like to take the vaccine. By then, those in their 70s had already obtained their vaccinations, while those in their 60s were already waiting their turn. Naturally, those younger people who realised their turn via the conventional route was still a long way off would opt to take the AZ vaccine. This younger population tend to have milder illness compared to the older population. Secondly, the AZ vaccine commenced more than a month later compared to the other vaccines. In addition, the interval between the first and second doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine was 9 weeks, which was longer compared to Sinovac and Pfizer's 3 weeks. Therefore, the first batches of those who were fully vaccinated with the AstraZeneca vaccine would only appear much later, leaving a shorter exposure period to the virus. For these two reasons, the effectiveness of the vaccine will be shown to be falsely high and cannot be directly compared with the other vaccine brands. Okay, now let's compare the effectiveness between Pfizer and Sinovac. I believe we have a fairly valid comparison between Pfizer and Sinovac. Both started about the same time, well, maybe Pfizer a little earlier. Both covers a wide range of age groups and both have the same dosing intervals. In this comparison, we are more interested with the death rates rather than the ICU admission rates. Because even if, if a person gets admitted to the ICU and survives and not die, it's okay, right? So let's focus on the death rates. Pfizer is able to reduce deaths by 93%, while Sinovac, 84%. The difference does not appear to be much, right? But percentages can be deceiving. Because when we look at absolute numbers, we could have a totally different story. Before we proceed any further, there are two assumptions we need to make. Firstly, we must assume that since the virus would be endemic and continues to circulate, everyone would have to encounter the virus and be exposed to it. Secondly, we must also make an assumption for the death rates for those not vaccinated. We can get a fairly accurate death rate by looking at countries that have done extensive tests to detect COVID infection. The death rates fall between 0.4 and 2%. So let's take a conservative death rate of 1%. If the death rate for the unvaccinated is 1% and Sinovac is able to reduce death by 84%, we would see a death rate for Sinovac of 0.16%. Therefore, out of the 7.2 million people who took the Sinovac vaccine, we would see in absolute numbers 11,520 deaths among those fully vaccinated with Sinovac. Had these 7.2 million Sinovac vaccinees taken the Pfizer vaccine, which reduces death by 93%, the death rate would be 0.07%, or in absolute numbers, 5,040 deaths. 
a difference of 6,500 deaths. That's a lot of additional deaths. That's more than the annual deaths on Malaysian roads due to motor vehicle accidents. The data also showed that 76% of vaccine breakthrough deaths occurred in those 60 and above, and more than 90% of them had comorbidities. For that reason, I would like to urge the authorities in Malaysia to consider re-vaccinating all Sinovac vaccinees who are 60 and above or those who have significant comorbidities with two doses of the Pfizer vaccine to stem the number of deaths from COVID. This is especially so for states like Sarawak, where the majority of adults have taken the Sinovac shots. If you are one of the minority in Malaysia who has yet to take the COVID vaccination and decide to do so now, given a choice, you would opt to take Pfizer. In Singapore, anyone getting a Sinovac vaccine is not included in the tally of those who are considered vaccinated. So for Singapore residents who opted for the Sinovac shots, I would strongly encourage you to re-vaccinate with two shots of Pfizer or Moderna as offered by the Singapore government. Revaccinating with the two full doses of Pfizer is the only way to ensure full protection. Then how about giving a single booster dose of Pfizer? Would that work as well? Well, several countries such as Thailand, Philippines, Turkey and the Middle East have started giving boosters from a different brand for those who have completed their Sinovac shots. Unfortunately, no concrete data is forthcoming with regard to the effectiveness of using a single Pfizer booster for these Sinovac vaccinees. The only data I could find with regard to combo vaccines involving Sinovac is from Thailand, who started off with Sinovac initially but decided to give another brand as a second dose. Studies in Thailand have shown that the combination of Sinovac Pfizer mounted the highest antibody response, followed by Sinovac AstraZeneca, and the lowest was the Sinovac Sinovac combo. While giving a single Pfizer booster dose is a reasonable option to consider, it is not backed up by robust evidence. How about giving a Sinovac booster to those who have taken the Sinovac shots? Well, again, no data is available, but I would expect a suboptimal response. Okay, let's put it this way. If two doses does not give a good response, a third dose would very likely not as well. But make no mistake about it, Sinovac vaccine does work and it has probably saved thousands of lives in Malaysia. But between Pfizer and Sinovac, Pfizer is clearly superior. In conclusion, a person on Sinovac is more than twice as likely to die compared to a person on Pfizer. The number of deaths for those who receive Sinovac while reduced is still significant. And this can be brought down tremendously by revaccinating or at least giving a booster with Pfizer to those above 60 or with comorbidities who are at highest risk of death. Okay, that's it for this segment. Take care, stay safe and continue to have a heart for kids.